click. What's up, fam? Extraordinary Life with Elijah. And this week, Penny, Kelly, Heather, Joel, Peter, Elizabeth, Mark, James, Dawn, Michelle, Noah, <laughs> my father, all are my extra, and I am the ordinary. Family, uh, there is no possible way that I can speak all of my love and affirmation to all of you, other than to say I'm so blessed and honored to have you in my life that knowing you and being a part of covenant community with you in Jesus imparts so much grace to my life to know him more. I am so deeply thankful for you and bless you in Jesus' name. As I shared in last week's video, that in this season of time, there, there's so many things that are all coming to a head at one time. It, more things than I could tell you about here, some of them things timed that I can't tell you about here, that God is doing in and through me. And it's so beautiful. And <laughs> in the midst of all of that, that I often forget my sonship in him and begin to believe that there's so much at stake in my choices, that there's so much that rides on me doing things correctly and well, and as a result, wind up taking stress and anxiety to myself as I begin to strive in performance rather than to just rest within God's goodness and his provision. As I shared last week that I've been pressing into rest with him, choosing rest and salvation before him, lying before his presence and to confess that he is my provision, my strength, and my all. Bodhi Bear, <laughs> my little prophet, prophesied to me, that, Dad, this is how you do it when you wake and bust. <laughs> he starts singing prophetic worship as soon as he wakes up. So beautiful. It really began to help break me through into rest in God. And then had such a wonderful encounter then in God's presence within a Tuesday night ministry time in my home fellowship called Pursuit Nights. The previous night, I'd been going to, to bed and I engaged my wife just before we went to sleep about how we need to, to get together, have a summit and talk about where we're at as a family and our finances and the business and just rhythms in life. And she's so incredibly kind. She's so incredibly loving. I'm so blessed as, as her husband to have a wife who, who confronts me and speaks into my life with such quiet gentleness. She was very direct in saying that she had a number of things on her heart that she needed to, to speak with me about, but then was so intentional to confirm and affirm her love and support of me that being honest about where we're at as a family and having very honest and open conversations was in no wise a commentary on my success or failure or my ability to hear from the Lord and to merge our family forward in vision. I bless and celebrate those elements in her life that she's so able to speak into my life with such concise clarity, with such quiet gentleness. And it's part of her ravaging beauty and manifesting who the Lord is in and through her in his holiness. As a result of my choices then, my choices, <laughs> then I allowed those things then to begin stirring in my heart and mind in an unsanctified way. It began then to rob my peace that I, I tried to go to sleep. But my mind was just turning and spinning and I couldn't go to sleep then for a number of hours. I was up far into the night and through all of that, that I continued to battle to, to quiet my soul, to put my trust in God, and to press into his presence, to find the joy that exists in fullness within his presence. As I continued to, to press into that, in quieting my spirit and my soul, that I did find great measures of the Father's presence and it encouraged my heart, but that I got to a place in my pursuit of him where there was just a barrier that I couldn't break into the more that I was hungry for. 
as I began to press into all of his promises and our relationship together, I began to get a bit angsty in my desires. And rather than just asking and engaging, I began to begging. That's when he began to speak to me by his spirit and said, begging is not becoming to the sons and daughters of heaven. That begging is asking without trust and that I know what your heart's desires are before you even ask. And son, I invite you into seeking me with confidence. I <laughs> had such a gentle rebuke. And I took it to heart and said, I am sorry, Father, but I'm so hungry for you. I'm hungry for more and I can't break into it with you. So when he then reminded me that there are measures and realms of his glory and his person that are incapable for us to engage outside of connection within the communion of covenant community. As he reminded me of this, but then he said, addendum, don't forget tomorrow night is Tuesday night, pursuit night, and you're leading worship. Family, I'm so tired here in this moment. It's Friday of the week. I record my videos on Monday. It's been so incredibly busy, but even as I speak out his words that I can feel a rejuvenation in my spirit as I speak out his words, that they come forth from my lips again, that I can feel a lifting of my person and my energy here in the moment of recording this video for you. The next morning, I was working with Mark, one of our leaders for our pursuit night on, on some construction handyman elements. He's starting his own handyman service and I, I have friends who are in need of input from an industry professional. He and I had been trading texts, but as a result of that, we celebrated that we were gonna see one another on Tuesday night and have pursuit night together. I told Mark, I'm so hungry for the presence of God, Mark. I told him about what the Father had said to me. <laughs> I said, Mark, prepare yourself. I'm coming in hot tonight with a hunger for heaven. <laughs> As we showed up together to celebrate, to fellowship in God's presence, Elizabeth had some songs that were on her heart that she wanted me to lead to enter the night. The songs were ones I'd never played before. And five minutes before we started our time together, that I pulled up the lyrics and chords, strummed through them, and then was working out the melody lines as I was leading the song, starting off our night. It was so incredibly beautiful then to press into the honor and the mutual respect and submission to one another within ministering to the Lord that we were pressing into together as a community. That I bring the music that I had prayed over and spent time in all of these songs and had learned them with excellence and had spent time in the Lord's presence thinking about their purpose and their meaning, but that as I merged into that place that God was laying things on Elizabeth's heart and that she had grace and freedom to ask me to serve her and the body with the things that God was laying on her heart, that I surrendered and pressed into things that were so uncomfortable for me and that we did so with freedom and submission and honor to one another and that as we progressed into the evening, when we got to then the end of the night at 8 p.m. That's one hour from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Elizabeth stood and said, what a wonderful time. We're dismissed. Anyone who wants to go, the, the official time of ministry is done. But if you want to stay, you have testimonies or you want to remain in his presence a little bit longer, some of us are going to stay behind. Family, the first hour was so glorious. There was so much ministry, so much encouragement in that first hour. But as we remained, we stayed within God's presence and continued to pursue him with a wholehearted devotion to hunger after him, that he in his grace and his goodness and his generosity and his love and his pursuit of us in honor of his word, that as we draw near to him, he will draw near to us he began to fill the sanctuary and our fellowship with the manifest power of his presence. It was so beautiful then as the night progressed that 
the overwhelming power of his person and his love that began to be expressed to us all, began to pull everything straight in the palpable presence of his glory. As the night progressed and my mind became so unfruitful in the things of this earth, in the things of thinking or talking or even standing. <laughs> the Father then began to have a side conversation with me as I ministered before him and to others by my spirit and began to say, Elijah, access those anxious thoughts. Elijah, access your lack of peace. Elijah, access your confusion in knowing what to do. Access those things if you can. <laughs> as I did, they were nowhere to be found. I couldn't find my anxiety or my stressful thoughts anywhere. All of the confusion was gone. I knew one thing, God and his love for me. It was so incredibly beautiful to see the manifest impartation of God's peace that surpassed understanding in that moment. The crowning jewel of the night came in a time of ministry after we had finished singing and ministering in music and worship, that we were then ministering to one another in prayer and intercession, and that I got to have an experience with God that has superseded all of my encounters with him by his glory in 42 years of life here on earth. For so long in my life, I've pursued God in a desire to have him manifest his presence in my life in such a way that it would absolutely overwhelm and incapacitate me in, in my self-control. Throughout scripture, there's examples where it talks about God's presence filling the temple in such a way that those who ministered before him were incapable of ministering before him anymore, much less standing in his presence. Now, I've seen other people who have experienced such things, and my entire life was so cynical and judgmental about the authenticity of their experiences and their expressions that I would often judge them or slander them to others either in my heart or with my words amongst the assembly. The beauty of God, though, is that he doesn't much care for the boasts and the empty claims and thoughts of man, but does exactly as he pleases, as God most high. <laughs> as we pressed into our prayer time, and his palpable presence was amongst us, I was praying for an individual when all of a sudden I wasn't anymore. And I found myself laying on the floor, my head between another man's feet on the floor. I couldn't lift my arms. I was so incredibly heavy that I hadn't passed out. I've passed out numerous, numerous times throughout my life. I know what it is to pass out. That when you wake up, that your body is so flush. There's so much adrenaline throughout your body. You feel weak, you're sweaty, you're clammy. None of those elements were present, but that my mind had experienced a hard reset in the physical and was coming back on online. <laughs> the, this, the manifest power of God and his presence was so incredibly powerful in the room, but th that my physical body could no longer stand up under the weight of his person. So many people over the years have called it being slain in the spirit. <laughs> in my soul, I have a soulish anaphylactic reaction to that term because of my experience with it over my entire life. Regardless of semantics or whatever you want to call it, that God gave me an experience in his power and his might of glory to know that when we as the creatures of below who live in these tents of body come into a context where his glory his holiness and his power is so palpably and manifestly revealed. Our physical bodies know no other position before his great person but to get as low as possible within his presence. <laughs> My physical body no longer was in control. It gave up absolute control 
and I hit the deck. My mind said, I will not think any thought aside from being in complete surrender to your presence and glory. I turn off all circuitry. <laughs> and that in that place that my body, my soul, my spirit, my flesh all found perfect surrender under the mighty hand of God. Family, my testimony then is to you that in that space, I had so much peace, more peace than I've ever experienced in my life more manifest love of the Father than I've ever experienced in my life, more confidence in his person, more faith than I have ever experienced in my life as having walked this earth for 42 years. My encouragement to you is that this encounter that I had with God and finding him as a result of my wholehearted pursuit of him with my whole heart was that it came through a context of seeking him wholeheartedly within the congregation of believers. Family, God's promise to us is that we will seek him and find him when we seek him with all of our heart. As I experienced on Monday night, that as I chose to dedicate my heart solely before the Lord to pursue him, to seek him, to find him, and to be found by him, that I did press through into his glory, but that the hunger, the deep longing of my heart for a deeper realm of his glory was incapable of being satisfied by myself. And that he reminded me that there are elements and realms of his glory that can only be experienced and encountered within a context Context of covenant community together, unified by his spirit. The manifest affirmation then of the Father's word to me in the night came then in Tuesday's pursuit night, that as we gathered together as a band of 12 to 13 believers who were wholeheartedly pursuing the heart of God, that he came to us and manifest himself in a way that superseded any experience of my life of 42 years. The, the celebration, the the honor then that is in my life is that I so honor the people who came along with me in their wholehearted pursuit and empowered me to have experience with God that superseded the expression of my faith's pursuit of him. If you long to press into the heart of God and to know him on deeper and more intimate levels, if you're hungry for a deeper experience with him than you ever experienced in your life, to know more of him beyond any experience in your life in a more intimate way and have been doing that though in a context of isolation from the body as a result of either of hurt, as a result of being hurt within the body and then pulling away such that you're trying to keep yourself safe or maybe it's due to arrogance and pride that you're supra spiritual and that you don't need the rest of the body that you're more spiritual because you seek god by yourself at home my friends my encouragement to you is out of my manifest expression of receiving god's word of faith hearing having my heart filled with it and then stepping out in it within the assembly is that God's word is true and that he has ordained the members of his body to be jointly fit together by the power of his spirit in such a way that a dwelling place is built sufficient to house the fullest expression of his person released in the presence of his spirit. <laughs> if you subscribe to what I am doing and would like to hang out with me and pursue the Lord together in greater numbers, wholeheartedly to pursue even greater measures of his glory, I'd be forever indebted to the gift of your person imparting grace to me so that I could know the Father more. Man, I would love to do that. If you subscribe to what I am doing, then hit the button. 
hit it and then get it. Hit the bell as well so you get notified with the new content. And if you love this video, you didn't just like it, then hit the thumbs down button. Pray blessings on all of your days. I love you guys lots and I will see you in the next video.